Peace, peace, family. Peace, peace. Oh, we're going to have a great show tonight. About to bring on my guests. Half of my guests is here. The other, the other, the other twin has not arrived yet. He is coming soon. But um, it's Friday night, y'all. So let's have a good time tonight. Let's do some learning, some growing. Let's have a little fun, some smiling, and all that other good stuff. Wanna uh bring right to the stage, right to the platform. Uh, my brother Blue Pill. Blue Pill man, welcome back, Blue. Peace, peace, my good brother. Thank hey, you for having me. Yes, it's always <laughs> an honor. Indeed. We waiting yeah. for your brother Red. Red said he's a little late, so Red will be here shortly, okay. family. But um, this is the uh the year of the eight, the year of the four four blue. The solar eclipse just went down. Let me let me start out like this, Blue. And I know y'all got something um an event happening in Atlanta tomorrow. Well, I'll wait till Red to get here probably to uh, tell the family about that. We'll talk about that. Let the room fill up. But um, I remember I was doing a, I was doing a series of shows. About the eclipse blue and um one of my guests aquarius maximus she was talking yeah. about mental health with the eclipse she, she, she said look that. out for the people with, with with mental health issues then i remember the day right after the eclipse blue uh there was a report with a female who was an astrologer online she must have went crazy or something and she ended up killing herself and i think one of her children uh, she killed the boyfriend yeah. She felt as though it was the end of the world. Maybe you could correct me if I'm wrong. She felt as though it was the end of the world. Ended right. up stabbing her boyfriend to death, I think. Took her kids, got in the car, and went speeding down the highway. I think both of them fell out the car. One died, one survived. She eventually crashed into a, a tree. Right. Um, You think that was connected to the eclipse and it's just something that we need to take more serious in terms of what just happened and mental health? really at this time right now blue um you know once again mental health was already stretched it was already exasperated in our community and in our society you know what i'm saying people were already on the edge so if something comes along such as an eclipse and it adds extra oomph on that it puts extra emphasis on placements and places where people might be vulnerable in their quote-unquote chart yes we can see mental instability because it's dealing with the mental you know what i'm saying and the women are expressing it there were two cases and they both represented both coasts of this country there was a case in florida the day of the quote-unquote eclipse the young lady got in the car she took an ar and a, a quote-unquote glock allegedly the way the story is being reported and she was shooting out on the freeway and she said god made her do it and she tied that to the eclipse and then you know the young lady in california <clears throat> said that um experienced the same situation you know but she uh she she unalived her uh her significant other and she she unalived one of the children unfortunately and she herself was unalived and yes you know the way that the narrative is being spun especially in the media but according to her own words you know it was tied in to her not seeing you know the quote-unquote light at the end of the tunnel as a as a in, in regards to what was being um said about this eclipse and we also did a show i did a show with you on the seventh um the day before it i believe uh no I, we did a lecture on the seventh. we did it we did it on four four at the venue and i was saying in that particular lecture like yeah this is really going to impact people's mentals you know what i'm saying so you have to be able to calibrate where exactly are you in life is this something that you can deal with are you intentional and purposeful you know and then there's no saying that it's going to happen if that's you know how you're approaching it people were quote unquote gambling with the unknown and they were stepping into uncharted territory with this so this is a gamble and an experiment that everyone did participate in, participated in but those who refrained you know kudos to you but we 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 have a tendency to see that um 
when something has a, a, a capacity and ability to create a contagion, you end up being affected by it, even if you didn't participate. Mm. Wow. You know, so blue. So I seen a video. Um, so I never posted. Um, and he was showing. He was talking about how um, the regular folks, what we would call eighty fivers, they was um, enjoying their life, and um, how conscious folks was kind of acting weird and scared and stuff um, about this event, and that um, I guess some people would say. This is what consciousness could do to you if you're not prepared. Um, do you think with, say, if something continues to happen, like let's say there's another event when an astrologer or a metaphysician or somebody that's into alternative health that does something weird or whatever, do you think, do you ever see um, an eventual crackdown on the internet with this information? Because maybe some people are mentally can't handle the information that is given and it may, you know, look at um, nature boy, look at nature boy, or, you know, we could just go on, you know, they'll use the information and pimp the shit out of it or do weird, crazy shit. Would there ever be a ban on this information do you see in the future? Blue? Quite possibly. Right. If, if, if society goes to an authoritarian society and, you know, they always want to blame the effects but never get to the cause of things of course they can criminalize things that are quote unquote commonplace you know what i mean um these things happen right you know every day be as they say unfortunately uh there's a responsibility that comes with being able to access the realm of the adepts right so that's why once again Things were traditionally done that would bring people over to the other side of the rope to say, this is the reality that you requested. This is how you've been tested for us to know that you can handle right exposure to these levels because things, you know, there's levels to this shit for real. And some people are playing, you know, in, 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 in the wrong places at the wrong time and just thinking because there's a uh, a. Um, a public conversation about everything that everything is accessibly publicly and that's not true some things still are private you know so this is where the lines need to be drawn mm -hmm. so we live during a very interesting time you know oh, yeah. we can even see that that it's been stripped down to it's not about your likeness they already got that with the deep fake now it's down to the the, the two tests it's down to the spirit realm it's down to your voice, right? We're at the final frontier and AI has not even embodied itself yet. And it got its foot on people's neck because these AI artists have now encroached upon the most vital asset or essence of what man represents. And that is the spirit or the voice or the breath. Mm -hmm. mm. If they could clone the voice yeah. imperfecto, Wow, you know they they really don't need you. Do you you know and, and good blue? And I've heard some of this AI music coming from the latest AI music generate generator apps. People can say what they want. They're nailing this shit, and they're gonna give the quote unquote flesh and blood artists a run for their money. If the AI version is better than you, maybe <clears throat> a phone can put you out of business. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, dear. you know um before we move on because i definitely want to um talk about uh some of the current things that's happening um right now um i do yes. have a couple of questions about j cole and i keep hearing about this this show the three body problem on netflix i want to touch on that a couple of things tonight we're gonna have a good time tonight um yeah. but i want to ask you this blue do you think if we could put out, if you could put your mind, you know, you know, I'm sure we've had several incarnations in this realm. Me and you have been into this information for a while. We've seen the ups, we've seen the downs, we've seen what the potential it has, good and bad. Do you think if you could put your mind in the in the mind of a being that existed, let's say um 8,000 BC, 
and they was observing what I'm doing right now with this level of information, the speakers all over the globe coming on one channel, dispersing information to anybody willingly listen in the world. Do you think they will consider that irresponsible because this information maybe in their time was only reserved for people who truly deserve it. And when I say deserve it, people who went through certain schools, I think in Egypt, you, at 40 years old, you finally um, was able to do certain things or whatever. So do you think the ancestors back then may say, I'm being a bit irresponsible by allowing this information to be available to everybody? That's a very interesting question and a perspective to approach it from. And I think, you know, when I do think about that, part of me wants to say yes. And then another part of me wants to say that their observation would also help them see that there's different circumstances that we're under and information yeah. okay. such a drought and unavailability to access to these realms. Okay. You know, the Internet provided people with a funnel and a tunnel to go in dark places that normally they would take their vessel <laughs> <laughs> but to protect your vessel because that's the quote unquote flesh is the queen on the board that's the the physical part of you the part of you that's most vulnerable now mm -hmm. we, we were able to access it through via the cyber realms you know really like mm -hmm. true occult so right, right, right. um i think that they would say that there was a system set up for a reason and the wisdom of the sages and the wisdom of the elders is Saturnian. So they would speak about seven generations from now. They would speak about the long play. You know, these are the <clears throat> okay. questions and ramifications that potentially may come from this, you know, and there was put stops put in place to avoid this. You might not see the layout. You feel me? Mm -hmm. Of, of mm -hmm. what they're attempting to avoid as things unfurl themselves, you know, through the process. So, yeah, but I also would hope that they would understand that when this world is engulfed in darkness and we live in our own form of the dark ages, yes, that there was an electrified age and people had to be electrical and shine that light, you know, and be the nodes in the, in the matrix. And these are the people, you know, these these are the people that are the resistance in the matrix you're part of that you know what i mean we live in a movie that we grow up watching and they mad at us i'm like we was conditioned and primed for shit like this we we live in in the middle of all of our movies mad max i am legend uh demolition man you know what i'm saying total recall i mean everything that they showed us in the movie is how they introduced introduced us to the possibility of reality and now we have manifested it and we use cultural references to or we use pop cultural references to make note of things that we see in our cultural reality every day it's our point of reference oh that's right. like this you know yeah they got ipads like how we seen in the jetsons you know what i'm saying right. oh star trek had the iphones and so we're always once again embellishing in the mythos but in denial of it I'm like, embrace it. You feel me? There's power in it if you know how to manipulate it. I was here a few months ago telling you about the Black Myth story. I'll be damned if it's not full blast right now. And it has metatized medis into the Black Christos mythos. And let's talk about this J. Cole uh, Kendrick situation. And I will show and prove my theorem. So, um have you noticed anything different you know there's a lot of sun talk um have you personally noticed anything different from the sun since the day of the eclipse personally have you experienced anything or noticed anything um again we we were in communication during the eclipse and i also you know everything that i explained to you leading up to the eclipse everything that i've been saying about eclipse and what i experienced in the last eclipse has manifested itself i said during the last one in 2017 what i said when i got off that mountain it was hurricane harvey automatically i noticed that there was an increase in weather conditions in places and pockets 
where biblical proportions of rains were falling. Did we not see that the other day in Dubai, in Oman, in Afghanistan, in Pakistan? See, all of them places don't got cloud seeding programs simultaneously, and Dubai can't violate the international sovereign airspace of another country and start seeding their clouds. You feel me? So it's the convergence of a lot of different things all at once. It, it could feed a multiplicity of quote unquote <clears throat> questions and answers. Somebody could be like, oh, a law was mad, true. Oh, there was a convergence of, you know, cloud seeding with other fronts, true. Who, you know what I mean? It could be anything and it could be all things as well. But we're seeing a lot of things that have correlations like April 8th, the day of the quote unquote eclipse, the man who named the Higgs bosom, which is the ghost particle, right? That they're looking for at CERN. That is the God particle that they're looking for. Ironically, the other day, they were able to find a holographic image of it within the cube. And it looks like, it looked like the eight or the crystalline serpentine DNA spiral which actually looks like an eight or an infinity sign when you turn it on the side. So they were able to capture an image of that. And the dude that's responsible for creating the technology for them to interface with that or for them to observe it in real time. Because remember, God is a cube and his number is 26. Two and six is eight. This would, what did they just see looking at the God molecule during this whole conflation of the crystal's energy and nobody caught it. And then the nigga transitioned the day that they turned CERN on on April 8th. Come on now. And he was 94 years old. Mm. He, he transitioned on the 8th? On the 8th. Mm. On the day of the eclipse and the day that they turned CERN back on, the dude who was responsible for the Higgs bosons, they named it after him, transitioned the, at the same time. You feel me? So people might want to call that a coincidence. Oh, wait, there's more, right? <laughs> so not only did he make that particular transition at the same time, but he was 94. Then all of the incidents connected to 1994 happened in the in a spurt of threes, right? So OJ makes transition. His Bronco chase happened in 94. Almost to the, you know, we're coming up on that day. We was reminded of that chase because a few days ago, the diddler, right, said that they, they he was almost mimicking this, this, this quote unquote persona that he shows in every single video. If you go back and look at them, he's always eluding the popo, right? He's always on the run, always. And then he posted to his page on uh one of them days it was a pivotal it was a friday and he put up the victory video and victory is my favorite song i can't believe that i remember that video the way that it's laid out because the whole video was almost chronicling everything that he's going through now and he did it 30 years ago but in the video he's once again escaping from the popo you know yeah. Yeah, Jew had brought that up. Jew so, was dropping yeah. that. That was dope. Yeah. You know, in that that in that video, they got the New World Order tag in there. Yeah. They got all kind of stuff. I mean, it's it's so eerie. And that was my favorite song from Big. That was the last song he recorded. He recorded that the night before he transitioned. So, you know, there's a lot going on. And and we're seeing the folding of time and dimensions. And, and once again, people might thumb their nose at the at the stuff because they're seeing it through the realm of entertainment. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, look, it's playing out. You know what I'm saying? You in denial if you can't see it. So OJ was 94, right? Then you get Mr. C transitioning right after that. He's tied into Big's release of 94, which would be ready to die, you know? And then who goes right after that? Who goes? It was three of them. It was OJ. Oh, Rico Wade, then he's tied into Southern Playlistic Cadillac Funky Music, which comes out in 94 via Outkast and the Dungeon Family, right? So all of these 94s are lined up in a miraculous way such as that. You know what I'm saying? I think that that's something that's worth 
making an observation of you feel me right, um, right. and 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 there's so much more you know even before they popped the thing off over there they seized a a, a ship a container and it was called mrc aries and I keep telling people, when we're in Aries, Aries is going to Aries. You're going to see all Aries activities take place in this 44 season. And I'd be damned. It Aries, the Aries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In, the, in, the, in the second that we went into Taurus, they set it off over there. Right? Again, pushing the red heifer energy of what we're going into this weekend with Passover. Mm hmm why would they put their people in a precarious situation at a time of celebration? Nothing makes sense. Mm. Yes, uh, uh, weird, weird times, huh? Super weird. <laughs> You're finding out very. I mean, again, consistent with the with the moon. You're finding out things that almost seem to be inside out and topsy turvy. You're like, wait, who works with who? They did what? Sugar's coming out, telling people shit. Everybody's coming out right now. And telling secrets, straight secrets, stay crap. Right, right. Do you think this is the time? Um, I remember uh, when I was talking to you um, last time we was at the venue, you had mentioned Putin and uh, these pictures. I don't know if they're real or not, but there's so much talk about these pictures being released to Black Jesus. Do you think that this is the time? The time we're in now, it's so, is is going down so fast. Do you didn't think do you think this is the time where all these ancient texts start to get released from the Vatican, from this oh, place, from that place? You know, I'm 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 a student of eschatology, and my understanding is that the scriptures always coming to life. You know what I'm saying? That when the seals are broken and the scrolls are open, this literature takes on a life of its own. So we, we are in the season of the Christos. We are in the season of the resurrection of the energy of what we call Christ consciousness that does have the ability to materialize and crystallize itself, not just through consciousness, but actually through flesh and bone. If it resonates and finds the right tone or temple that it can occupy itself in what they call like the Ark of the Covenant. Right. But it, it you know, this potentiality always, always exists. You know what I'm saying? And that's the light of the world, right? That's the shit that keeps the, the lights on at night. You know, we always have to, you know what I'm saying? We always have to um, hold out in our own mental space. And James Small said it's a bad comparison if I say, you know, for that hey rule ability or capability. And he says it's an improper comparison when people compare Sean Go or hey rule with quote unquote Jesus which he says has no historical um, context, you know what I'm saying? And I'm approaching it once again, even from the space of an imaginarium. Right, right. You know, I, know, I know people to draw power from that shit. Mm. <laughs> like for real, for real. I know people mm -hmm. to slay demons with it, you know what I'm saying? Right. So you, you can use it, it's an energy vector. Blood is misbuilt for it. It has a form and a shape. I did whole lectures explaining to people what the shape was. The number of it is 444. You can't change that. Look, and the, and the shit popped up on the screen at the same time that I said it. Ain't that, yeah. ain't, ain't that, sir? That's funny, right? Yeah. It, it popped up a millisecond before you said 444. The universe yeah. is hilarious, yeah. Yeah, I swear. You know, <laughs> and, and again, those are just the confirmations. Those are the small things that you look for. You know, it's not the devil in the detail. It's the divine in the detail. The devil gets mm -hmm. exposed in the details. You find out in the details that the devil is just <laughs> the most high inside out, folks. No, indeed, indeed. Do, do, do you think um the, the OJ thing, you know, Bobby used to talk about, Bobby Hemme used to talk about the OJ case and how it had spiritual significance. Now, since OJ passed away right after the eclipse, you know, it makes you think about the whole black-white thing. The eclipse make you think about the whole black-white yes. thing. Um, what spiritual significance does OJ passing after the eclipse may have? If you could go into oh. your Bobby Hammond bag real quick. Again, <laughs> if I were to look at this and I there would be consistent with my observations, because my high level observations, I ain't never missed one word. I, I got I got almost like I got I got I, I, I got in front of the people 
and I got bucket naked with my theories in my mind. And I said, look, the way that I measure time is through an astrological lens. So if I can't explain it through astrology to me, I can't spin the wheel. It's outside of the focus of the peripheral of how I give it to you. You understand me? Yellow, right? (laughs) In the season of Aries, that's the season of the Ram. Y'all all right? And then what we saw with OJ representing the Bronco, and I just gave you a whole breakdown about the horsemen leading to the season of the cow, which is Taurus, which we at right now. And I've been telling you about the red heifer for a minute. Okay. Now, here we go. We in Taurus. The second that we in Taurus, you've seen them kick off dust. The Bitcoin having is today. I said Taurus is when they're going to go on a bull run because Taurus represents banking institutions, cryptocurrency, earth minerals, and resources. So every time we go into Taurus, especially going into the full moon, which is on April 23rd, which will be on Tuesday, my Umi's born day. Uh, peace, love, and light. And I love you, Mama Pill. Oh, Mama yeah. Pill, happy birthday. Yeah, KT had yeah, told me. I, right, right, right. Day right. will be on this full moon, the day right. after Passover, you know where we see that you know there's been um permits that have been taken out with the temple police over there over there for them to carry out this offering of the red heifer you know they have already put plans in motion and you know yes there, there's so much that's going on and 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 the I just want y'all to stay focused and understand that uh this shit don't necessarily just pay the rent but at the same time you need to be aware because it's geopolitical news and you know these are the niggas you got to pay rent to you understand me so if they got to go a bunker maybe you can get a few months uh you know you know bobby would say see the key is the key is <laughs> see the key is the key you is gotta stick around long enough before they gotta go in that bunker you, you see the key is you just gotta hold on just hold on to it i'm gonna show you how to take possession of it because they got squatter rights right now the key is Shout out, shout out to Bobby Heaven, man. Oh, that, that's that, that's my brother right there. Shout out to Bobby Heaven. The, the one, the only, the one and only uh Bobby Hammond. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, once again, yeah, yeah. De- definitely, y'all. Everybody give a, a happy birthday to Mama Pill. Make sure y'all definitely give a um again. I said uh, that that's April 23rd, y'all. It's not tonight, April 23rd. Okay, okay, April 23rd. Okay, we'll definitely reserve that for mama. She got one coming up, you know what I'm saying, on the full moon. Right, right. Oh man, beautiful, full beautiful. moon as well. You know what I'm uh-huh. saying? So, yeah, man, there's a lot going on, like I said, in the world. Um, <clears throat> we, we could talk about it through the lens of hip-hop. We could speak about it occult. We could speak about it astrologically, esoteric, geopolitically. You name it. You tell me what's the safest way that you want to approach it. And um, yeah, Well, well yeah. indeed, you know, um, I kind of, you know, with the whole J. Cole thing and the whole hip-hop thing, it kind of, you know, it's been like... Uh, a civil war going on in the, in the hip hop realm. Uh, one of the most influential coaches all over the globe. Very important coach. You can't sleep on the hip hop family. Um, with J Cole apologizing, let's let, let's start. I want to ask you a question about um, moving forward uh, as a man, you know, just as a stand up kind of a person. Uh, the idea of apologizing. I was listening to your your, your brother, your your partner. A business partner keys early and he was i was listening he did a show with um amichi and i, I seen it you. on youtube that's that's the name of michi i met you yes i met you yeah shout out to Amichi, good brother Amichi, um yes. and they was talking about the whole idea of apologizing right. um moving forward if we are to be who we're supposed to be bloom a lot of people are proud of j cole for apologizing some people are saying he shouldn't have apologized the, the idea of apologizing as a man and as an adult and as a god, Blue, I look at it two ways, Blue. It, it could be a form of weakness. I remember when I seen Obama apologize to a police officer and he was the president of the United States. I said, that nigga weak. I said, that nigga's weak. You apologizing to a, a cop and you the cop. president? You would have never seen a white you president. You the commander in chief. You the commander of the military. Yeah. Genuflecting to a police. Got so I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not blue. I'm not pro apologize all the time. Oh, you, you apologize. But I can see why J. Cole apologized. But just in terms of apologizing 
And in terms of um, it's sitting right with your spirit or not sitting right with your spirit, what J. Cole did, what's your thoughts on what J. Cole did and just the idea of uh, apologizing? For things. Again, you know, if, if you take away the faculty from men to be apologetic or to atone, right, or to come to an understanding or to be diplomatic, then mm -hmm. you're only relegating men to be warriors and, and, you know what I'm saying, clash of the titans. You only here for the blood. And he said, that's what he said. He's like, yo, mm -hmm. I feel it. Like, people is only here for the blood. And I keep telling you in every season, what my hashtag is, I don't want to keep repeating it, but it's consistent and I ain't failed to yet. Right. I got all of these backdrop stories to just show hashtag. There will be, you know, I did a whole lecture showing how they was calling for it with Trump the same because he was talking about bloodbath. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Mm -hmm. And all of this every season talking about blood, you know what I mean? All the way down to the Kansas City uh, parade with the 44 year old lady that got taken out. All of this ritualistic of blood. Kansas is the heartland of America. It won the Super Bowl in Vegas. The Vegas nerve is, is dealing with, you know, with 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 a with a flowing of that electric energy goes through the body to calm down the parasympathetic nervous system. So yeah, there's there's mm. there's just so much going on. There's so much tension. There's so much tension on the heart, on the blood. You know, the country is suffering things dealing with heart issues and conditions. People's hearts are stopping, you know what I'm saying, and skipping. And, they, you know, all of that other stuff that I'm not going to mention by name. But right. you guys, you know how it's impacting that heart center. So, yes, the empire is under attack. The heart is under attack. You feel me? Right. And that's what you've seen visually. You've seen... Um, Statue of Liberty is a copper edifice. Copper deals with um, this the 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 planet Venus. You know what I'm saying? That color green deals with heart energy. And you know they 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 struck her in the uh, in the torch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You feel me? On the left hand side where the heart is at. So you know. Is, 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 is things that we're seeing right in front of our face and people are in denial. They're attempting to attribute it to conspiracy or man himself. And I'm like, yo, this is the great divine speaking through sign all in front of us, all in our face. Post eclipse, things have been, yes, they've been very vivid. They've been very active. They've been very cut to the chase. Like, yo, you either accepting what you bearing witness to you know what I'm saying? Did you burn your eyes out? Y'all stood there and watched the sun and was looking at the sky, but you want to ignore the stuff in front of your face every day. Come on, mm. son. Yeah, this uh, individual so, love move said, son, go ahead, Blue, you, you yeah, still talking so, about So J. Cole, you know, operated an aspect there again, <clears throat> that weekend was the tripartite aspect of what the Christos represents, right? Christ represents jesus and christ represents the christos and then there's a synthesis between them two says the jesus the christ so the jesus is material the christos is purely spiritual and the jesus of the christ is the enlightened aspect of the synthesis between both of them who achieves christ consciousness through through turmoil and and and, and um you know challenges and things of that nature so Drake calls himself the sixth god. He's materialism. He's a Scorpio. He will be at the lowest spectrum and end of this particular equation. That boom is, is, is you know specifically for how he identifies himself, but energetically based on what his signature is. But we live in a topsy turvy aspect of this world where he is coming at, at on on the lowest spectrum of the energy, but he's at the higher realms of the game or so. That's what they're battling to see, right? They're battling for this airspace to see who has the, the the wand, who's really the wizard, who has the influence over the people. So the person that comes in with influence, the mercurial aspects of communication, Kendrick, the Gemini, right? He's somewhere in between materialism and spirituality, right? He's taste success. 
You feel me? He hasn't necessarily jumped off the ledge and splurged and given in to the compulsions of desires. Like, yeah, nigga, spend a million dollars. He know this is shit he talks about in his songs. He hasn't given in to the compulsions of temptation of flesh. He's talked about it in his song, right? He is the Gemini. He's balancing out both of these energies and these worlds at all times, struggling also while giving you testaments that are, you know, snapshots of his life you know real time <clears throat> updates about the shit that he's going to fight in dark and light <clears throat> and and the things that have probably been offered to him to give him the 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 coveted chrome um crown for them to co-sign it or sign it off and be like yeah he's the one we're not understanding the pressure that he must go up against to to never be considered by the industry the standard because he can't be especially when he's up against the amalgamated version of what they would prefer as the ideal quote unquote Peter piper right especially someone who shares their sensibilities is not going to tell people yo free palestine and that's what we and then you have j cole who's more spiritual than material you know what i'm saying and somewhere tinkering in the middle but more so leaning towards spirituality it appears as if he really just wanted the title of the throne on some hip hop shit, but he don't understand that this is really, this goes back to the dirt. This goes back to where people are from and where they rep and represent. Some of these artists can't go back home if they catch an L and lose to a singing ass nigga, right? Their lives literally be on the line. They'll be food. It's a different dynamic, you know what I'm saying, for what an L looks like for some of these people to take an L. But Kendrick or Cole for that matter, if you look at any any person that has the anagram of JC, that's a, a anagram for Christos energy. And J. Cole is a JC Christos energy, right? He's just the peacenik version of the Christ energy, not the warrior version of the Christ energy that got the thorns on their head and is willing to go, you know what I'm saying, all the way red, like a Kendrick is you know channeling the aspects of his hebrew israelite ancestry legacy 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 right i will chip one of these niggas up he understand that he's invoking that warrior energy of the judah people as opposed to the other strand that's what i see right 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 just uh curious who do you feel as though is the uh is coming out on top in this battle from uh, mm -hmm. uh hip-hop fans perspective not spiritually Again, but just yeah. you know as a hip-hop uh, the the, the, the purest the purest are definitely still sticking with kendrick you know they said that his verse was adequate enough that he doesn't necessarily need to respond right now because the response that it, it garnered wasn't worthy of uh uh of response so there's purists that are sitting on that. Uh, I don't agree with that necessarily, but once again, it's a it's a it's an observation from a fan from a far distance. If nothing else, again, J. Cole showed you that you got to make sacrifices to remind the world who's in control of your voice, and he took his voice back. And I want to commend him for that first and foremost. You know what no, I'm saying? Indeed, indeed, because yeah. it took a lot of courage for me to for him to say, look. Yeah, I'm not with the program or whatever the program has for me and it don't sit right with my spirit. So I can't lend my voice to it. Right. I can't live in my body comfortably <clears throat> if I'm doing something that compromises my spirit in the backdrop of his admonishment. He nailed himself to the cross. Right. He's he's the nigga that goes in front of the courthouse and puts himself on fire just for <clears throat> just for fucking around and trying right he's that much of a sacrificial god uh uh you know like that version of the christos so you know um yeah man is is you 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 didn't tell me who do you think though blue i want to know i want to know as a from you from your perspective as a hip-hop fan who do you think came out on top like, I don't duck the question now blue yeah, come on blue perspective, um <laughs> From what I'm looking at and the way that I'm viewing it, I'm still as a, really as a fan. Yeah, I'm, I'm still. Him? I still yeah. think that um, I think Kendrick was Kung Fu Kendrick on that verse. 
I agree. He kicked a lot of yes. dust up. And I think that, you know, Drake did not drill um, home no. the specific intention to say, I'm going to wash you. So he chipped back at him, but it's not like he sparred and left him bloody. He was fighting too many asymmetrical fights simultaneously, and he is not focused on one, you know, on really squaring up with Kung Fu Kendrick. Kendrick. And um, yeah, and I, <clears throat> I want to be led to believe that lyrically he can respond and answer, but I'm also mindful to tell people the styles win wars. And what I noticed about Drake that strategically, he made a song that you could bump in the club. He made a song that you could work out to. And he made a song that women actually like, you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, if he's mastered the, the art of the bop, how to make a bop, it's going to be a danger zone. You know what I'm saying? If Kendrick try to come back and he's just technical rap and he does not understand what it means to appeal to a larger aspect of the zeitgeist that can be like, was this even worth our time? When it's once again, really just stirring the waters of aggression, not just in hip hop, our minds is what permeates through the universe and creates the ripples and the waves of all things. We are cooking the ionosphere, almost like how you might turn the oven up and you see the coils get red, Right, 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 right. Yeah, that's what the atmosphere of beef has been since January pause, since Cat Williams said it all, right? And mm -hmm. came into the temple and turned the table upside down for the money changes. Mm -hmm. And we've been seeing it take place in every industry in its own iteration and version of it. And we don't, we again, I don't see no separation with things, right? Everything has to connect. So all of these incidents are connected to one another and it's just cleaning house energy. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah, that that's what why you know I was I forgot who I was talking to the other day. Um do you see, you know, if this is if this is an effect from the energy that's current that's present out there what we see going on in hip hop and what we see going on in different industries, why do you think the female artists haven't responded the same to these energies <clears throat> as the male artists? Have responded. Yo, these female artists are beefing, beefing. Like they beefing, beefing right now since yeah. the clip or before you mean? Before, before. Oh, okay. I mean, Glow, uh, uh, JT. If anything, if you really looking for it, you can see it through the women more so than anything. Mm. Cause they the ones to be chipping, especially during these astrological alignments. But definitely before, during, and after the eclipse, it was the women that was on social media going buck wild the city girls was at it and um they was going at it with glorilla and um you know lotto's going at, at it at, at one you know what i mean like it, it's just right. a lot of activity with them even in the reggae world they had a whole battle in the reggae world between two women that eclipse all of this shit because wow. they was making music music they was making whole songs and tracks and coming back to back to back mm. and again the the quote unquote fan and the listener benefited because they like oh this this is when y'all made some of the best music of your career right right and it really spurns a a, a swelling of creativity in the marketplace that people really want to get involved in you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying everybody really want to get outside and, and catch that lick for the summer right so music <laughs> is in it is an exciting place what what um you, you talk mentioned astro astrological alignments. What are we currently under right now, Blue? What's going on right now, astrologically and in the near future that the family should be aware of, Blue? What's happening? Again, you know, we just crossed into quote unquote Taurus season, right? On the nineteenth, mm -hmm. um, the day that you know the escalation took place on the other side of the planet. You know what I mean? um and today like i said as well they uh the, the having of bitcoin should be taking place and that has a strong correlation to tourist season and tourist season yeah. deals with banking big money institutions um earth resources material things of that nature 
So this is definitely a time that you want to keep your eye on the cryptocurrency market and the potential bull runs that not only Bitcoin, but other coins are, um, you know, these once in a lifetime opportunities, things are going to go very fast and very quick. So you want to be cognizant of at least what the conversation is. You want to be cognizant of what the convo is right now in that space. Um, so yeah somebody yeah somebody in the chat i did see that i was um and i never watched the news no more but i happened to turn on my tv and i seen they said a man caught um set himself on fire and i yeah. see somebody earlier said this year alone two people have publicly set themselves yeah. to blaze i'm hearing more of that what's up with that blue people send themselves on fire man you know again um shout out to the brother akiva Lan. he was in our lecture speaking about the phoenix rising energy and we're, we're just going to see that purification through fire you know um people use that as a as a, as a public protest and it's very effective because people speak about them and they remember them and this dude wrote a very detailed manifesto it was super deep mm. when i say he was going going there someone's really going there he was he he did his research and he was tapping on some things and it was really about government control and um exposing you know some of these people at the um at the highest levels of government you know pulling the covers off of them and, and doing the stitching the conversations that we can't have on these platforms for obvious reasons mm -hmm. or the ones that people are literally giving their lives to be heard so right now you know people who are deciding to, to to be on the front line they're pushing back against the censorship industry because it's an entire industry you know there's employees walking out of google for all sorts of i mean people are protesting it's height season for protests that's pluto and aquarius energy mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so i'm like yeah remember with me my observation was what i never said that you was going to wake up and be able to fly on april 9th i said it begins a 20-year cycle Think about it as a gradual shift from 2024 to 2044 during the season of pluto and aquarius we're going to be transforming transitioning you know what i'm saying <laughs> and bearing witness the transhumanism and a bunch of other things that as we can see you know it's, it's fast tracking you know what i'm saying we headed there Right. Some somebody said they're in Egypt right now and Ga Gaza is lit, they said. They said I live in Cairo. Yeah, man. It's uh um yeah, y'all know the, the the real estate agents, you know, you know what it is, you know. Uh you know, we are uh, on other platforms we'll discuss that, but you already know what, what the deal with that is, you know what I'm saying? But wow, yeah, man, it's like the whole world is 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 a lot, is a lot, I mean a whole lot going on right now, blue, whole lot. Red just actually, I actually just sent the link to Red. I think Red is coming on in a couple of minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead. Did you um send me that? Uh oh, here goes Red right here. Give me a second, y'all. Let me put Red in. Uh, yeah. I wanna um we got about we got almost two thousand people in here. Real quick, I want to make this announcement uh for tomorrow what's do you have the flyer um which you read yes i do uh, could you put the flyer up while you uh tell the people about um because i know y'all got something going on tomorrow everybody that's in the a yes we do yes we do um peace to the family peace to you and yours tomorrow at the fine hour of 4 20 p.m in atlanta georgia at 400 loyola drive loyola drive l O Y O L A Drive, which is industry ATL, the same place that our good brother, Brother Rich, had his festivities <clears throat> on March 9th. Me and Blue Pill will be having a book release, right? Entitled The 48 Pillars of Power, Volume One. We will also be having an album release entitled 48 pillars of power volume one and we will also be releasing a uh, stream all right uh thca stream uh stream strain i'm sorry <laughs> a thca strain uh, for all of my smokers out there all of my 420 enthusiasts me and blue have a powerful strain of black runs 
that is uh you know aligned with our new record label black cloud entertainment so it will be hosted by the hostess with the mostest our good brother brother rich we will have food available tomorrow we will have uh drinks available tomorrow we will have music available tomorrow we will also have many vendors i have a plethora of vendors clothing vendors jewelry vendors we have thc friendly vendors we also have our clothing line kings county soldier culture and a few other brands in the building please and the best part about everything it is open to the public free 99 free make that, sure yeah. y'all are in the building and come and experience 420 with the pillars and brother rich manana in the a it's going down yeah that, that's going that, that's going to be fun tomorrow man that's going yeah, to be fun tomorrow we're gonna have fun uh um, red actually family red actually um uh sent me a link to their album uh that they're releasing and it's, it's, it's i was i was very impressed so i want to yes. tell y'all a good job and if you in the atlanta area uh definitely come out tomorrow the brother just gave the address we'll try to put it in the chat in a little while but if you in atlanta definitely Indeed. come out we're gonna have a good time tomorrow tomorrow saturday i'm uh, i look forward to hosting it I look forward to giving it that energy, that that electricity. You yes, know what I'm yes, saying? Yes. And um, yes, it's, to that. yes, it's gonna be it's gonna be a good time. It's gonna be electric. Uh, you know the timing. It, they say that timing is everything, and the release of this musical project, the timing is man. It, it, it there was no better time than the time that we chose right now. That that's just all I want to say. The right. rumblings that are being felt in the industry, you know, uh, the waves that I feel that I've seen, you know, it, it, it's an indicator of something that's coming. Mm -hmm. The 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 chessboard, the proverbial chessboard of an industry that was really solid for 30 years. Just think about that. A 30 year foundation. It was foundational for 30 years under the quote unquote leadership of the black godfather. Y'all thought I was going to say Puff. But it was really the black godfather clarence savant right when he left that's when everything went out of control and the one who had to go was his quote unquote the one who was underneath him that was supposed to take his place which is your boy of course you see what's going on with him but the <laughs> whole chessboard has been unraveled the it's almost like when there's a winning season in the nba and then you come back the next year and everything has changed because there's team that the people who used to be uh the big three and whatnot or people who are right. on winning teams are now opposition music will never be the same it will never sound the same alliances and allegiances will never be the same just think about the music that ross and drake made that represents an epoch and an era coincidentally as the x or the cross went across the united states of america the most dominant domineering uh uh force coming out of the usa right that whole shit was shifting and changing forever right it was the ending of an era it was an ending of an era right. somebody dropped the addy for this for the yeah. um ad for 400 loyola if we have anybody in the chat who wants to play the role of a, a mod we would appreciate that. Thank you. 400 Loyola Drive, ATL. So they 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 made magical music. Future and Drake made magical music that will now go in the museum as an era. It, it that era no longer exists. There's no going back. And now we are moving forward into a new era. That in a nutshell is what today these days that we're in that that in a nutshell represents post eclipse consciousness and what also represents post eclipse consciousness is pick a side you niggas been playing a fence too long weirdos you've been playing a fence you've been getting away with playing the middle in the middle the monkey in the middle he never wins okay can't play the middle anymore so that's what we're beginning you to see look how they about to play america in this chess game of global politics that they're attempting to play 
Like everybody is dumbed down. Nobody is playing that game with America no more. They like, yo, if you attack, if you attack, you know who, then we not gonna do anything. Lies. Mm. Lies. You just talking mm. out your neck. Yeah, yeah, y'all haven't learned. You need an ego death. America, you need a detox. Mm. Mm. Yeah, you yo, still you know, playing childish games, and we not here for that. Uh Black Dot uh was talking about um insecure billionaires. Uh, very much that, so. And it was very interesting because I just I, I seen that after I was talking to you, Red, and I gave you my opinion on Drake, and I said I didn't like the insecurity of yes. his diss track release. They tried to he wasn't secure about it, so they was gonna pretend like it was AI. They want to see how the people responded. Then once yes. a couple of people liked it, they said, Oh no, it's it's a real diss track. He changed a few lyrics in it, changed the beat around a little bit. Um, yes. from the initial one so it's it's, it's it was kind of out that he took out homie's name diddy he took out diddy's he took name diddy's name out they did beat switches so, so you are now I, now I here's my here's my theory and that, you know my that. theory is this there's a lot of money on the table with big tech and ai open ai all of these billions coming from microsoft there's no money in music everything dealing with this rap bottle the ultimate player in the whole thing is who yeah. how, did, how, did, how did he find his way into a global rap battle how did ai how did i'm not talking about sun in philly either not little man not ai from philly not not bubba chuck how did ai wind up in a conversation because <clears throat> ai is in the middle of all of these new conversations moving forward from now in this world that we're living in because there is a new program called sono and there's a new program called audio we're we're in a world from this point moving forward you do not know who is real or who is not you live in a new world where there has to be a new human verifier to when a, if a new song comes out they have to say that's not ai for the people to celebrate a, as right. it stands right now they elected academics to be the human verifier right as it stands right now academics is the human verifier you will wake up and some heat might drop it might be part two of hit em up with kendrick going dumb on these niggas but you can't celebrate until somebody stamps and verifies it and says it's a human we're we're, we're right. in some different days y'all uh -huh. <clears throat> man two-step yeah. authentication with everything two steps two steps so it begins there how far is it going to go because i promise you they've mastered the technology called deep fake they they, they they took a step past the threshold of deep of deep fake and it's a public ai tool called hey Jin, where me and blue that's my twin right there right that's twin of them they have a they have an ai tool you talk about tyrone got cloned they have an ai tool right now called hey Jin, where i can make a digital twin of red pill he will have my inflections he could have my he could, they, they they could completely mimic me bro yeah they could completely <laughs> mimic me and this is with a free tool mm -hmm. yo you heard uh kendrick's ai response Fire. Like I, I knew, I knew something was, was wack. When I, I, I was like, right. The Drake, the Drake AI, but it was like, was, right. And there's some talk about maybe Drake. Like, there was mm -hmm. rumblings about Drake having AI as a co-writer. He don't got no shame. You see, what he had Dang, a whole yeah. sweatshop yeah. of niggas. Yeah, he don't got no shame. Mm. He don't let got me, no shame. Let, let me let me ask you this, Red and Blue. How do you yeah. feel about the position? Kai Sinat and academics plays in hip hop culture moving forward. I will, I remember just a few years ago, Charlemagne was like the top dog in terms of media and in terms of hip hop personalities, whether it was Kanye West doing interviews with him, Birdman or whatever. Now it seems to have gotten going to academics and Kai Sinat in terms of the culture and what the culture represents. How do you how do you feel about them? taking it or, or to the next level or or fucking it up all right here's my take right 
There's two things. There's three things at play right now. One, there's yeah. a new demographic that is considered to be the preferred demographics. This is the demographics that everybody is targeting right now. They are the group called Generation Alpha, right? It's them okay. young niggas. The young niggas are taking over, okay? Uh, hide your kids, hide your wife. Them young niggas is here, right? That new generation is the preferred demographics. I call them the Y2K Osiris kids, right? Mm -hmm. 2000 babies, the ones that are 24 right now, the ones that are 18, the ones that are 17, everything from the 20 to 2000 clip moving in, right? Those are all considered to be the Y2K Osiris kids, right? That's a different breed, a different pedigree. These niggas are different, but they're running shit because they have the algorithm. They're digital. They're not algorithm. We are algorithm. We're, we're, we're not, uh, not algorithm. They're, they're, we're analog. Me analog. personally, I'm considered a mixture of analog and digital. There's some people who are completely analog. Then there's some people that are digital. Now, academics represents an old guard. He represents YouTube. Kai Sinet, Aiden Ross and them, they represent a new guard. It's called streaming. And that's Twitch. And that's kick and whatnot. Two totally different worlds, right? But what Kai Sinet doesn't have is what academics has. And Kai Sinet was beginning to take over. The streamers were winning and whatnot. The streamers were taking over the YouTube world because YouTube... The way that this is, is a little bit different than the streamer world in terms of how the whole broadcast thing is set up. Kai Sinet don't have the insider know-how of an academics. And academics back was up against the wall, and he came out as the winner in this one right here. And he proved when he was losing it, he was slipping because the labels were beginning to go to the streamers with the money. Now the labels are going to come back to academics because academics stands in the streamer world. He solidified himself in that world and he solidified himself in the YouTube world and whatnot. These young kids, y'all, who are listening, they're getting $10 million a platform for this shit. Think about You got to understand what game we're in. It's called mm. advertising. It's a big game that you're playing in. So there, there'll be a streamer like there'll be a streamer like Aiden Ross or I Show Speed. Or Kai Sinet, they're getting money from Kick, right? Which is a streamer platform. They, they, I heard the deals are 40 million, 10 million, 20 million. Then they're getting money from Twitch. They're signing deals for 10 million, 20 million. Then they're getting deals with Spotify. They're giving niggas 10 million, 20 million. Then they're getting deals with all of these other companies that are endorsement companies. Anything that you see on the show, all of these commercials, I'm talking about hand over fist getting to the bag if you have children out there ladies and men brothers entertain the concept when you <clears> ask your child what they want to say and they say i want to be a content creator entertain that concept don't shy away from it don't don't shun them don't make them feel bad because they see a world around them developing where people are making a hundred and two hundred million dollars playing video games smoking weed talking about whatever they want to talk about and just genuinely being them whole crews of them right, right the 20 right. versus one movement amp uh you know all of this stuff so very interesting what's taking place academics is now that the, he has hip-hop journalism in a headlock and, and that just shows that just goes to show the state of the journalism right now mm. yeah yeah uh, like i said times have changed i remember it was just it was just I remember talking to you on the phone and I was like, yo, Red, five years ago, you was on the top of the world if you went to the Breakfast Club and you was a hip hop artist. Now they they going straight to the, the Kai Sinai. The with Kai Sinet, right? Yeah, they spend yeah, the night yeah, with um, them. You, you seen, um, um, what's the Migos dude name? That, uh, that was, oh, that oh, was real. Offset. Yeah, offset, yeah, that was a real good move when he went to Kai Sinai. It got right. millions and millions of views, man. So he branded himself. Yeah. Yeah, right? he branded himself, all of that. Amongst the demographics who stay on their phone, who mm. will run your old streams up, they 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 the rolling loud crowd. They buying tickets, they right. buying merch, and it's mostly white kids mixed in with ambiguous black kids. This this color thing don't exist with this newer generation when it comes to this culture and this entertainment mm. and all of that. Mm. 
they are all living vicariously through the lens of once another. Okay, mm -hmm. let's be clear. How do you how do you feel about? I was talking to Griff about this, um, and and you know just Shout out to having Griff. an open mind about what's going on. Griff gave a, a great answer, but I'm what definitely curious about what you, how y'all feel. The whole thing, you know, we're talking about this new generation of men with with fingernails, painting their fingernails. Um, yeah. Griff brought up you know different coach. He brought up um, Parliament Funkadelic. Uh, he brought up Prince. He brought up different example of artists who may have done it. But um, yeah, we live in a culture where the brothers is expressing themselves differently, and they like, yo, we not even. It don't even have to be that. We just express ourselves like this. What's your yeah. on this new expression of masculinity, Red? I have a I have a lecture that I did, and we went into it real deep, and we called it aesthetic nihilism. Right. We identified the behavior from a psychological perspective. We diagnosed it. Right. Um, and we also pointed out the fact that there are movements among youth, youth culture. One of the biggest movements among amongst the youth culture on a global scale is the mm -hmm. opium movement led by Playboy Cardi and whatnot. And opium is not just a record label. It's like a lifestyle and whatnot. So when you see Ice Spice with the all black on and the upside down cross, she's repping opium right when mm. you see um all of the, the the kids and whatnot and they're wearing all of these dystopian type of looks and whatnot the baggy clothes they looking homeless and whatnot that's the opium movement the all black mm. vultures that uh, the kanye adapted that's opium opium is about dystopia that's that's tied into the shit with travis scott with utopia opium is about the dystopia opium is about a design language opium is about you know it's it's a mind state so these children are really anti everything that their parents are these children are expressing themselves you know in this punk rock slash emo slash gothic slash they're rock stars remember when they was like party like a rock star and then thug came along and he was a stoner and whatnot opium the drug yes the movement is called opium it's not a drug it, you know op there was a club called opium in Atlanta, in, in miami and, and I, it was lines around the corner we wasn't asking no fucking questions we was just going there so the movement is called opium you know these children these these, these young adults rather they're heavy into this drug culture so the same way that y'all watching bmf because they was naming themselves after crack back in the days these younger dudes is naming themselves after the drugs as well they they on ketamine and fucking <clears throat> pills and you know what i mean these these are these are on the edge these are on the edge you know these these are on the edge of this whole movement deaf culture right there's an embracing of deaf culture but when you see the fingernails and all of that it's what i've identified as a uh it's actually a syndrome and a symptom called sassy aggressiveness could you explain what that uh it well, sounds you know like what passive, passive you know what you sounds, know what passive sounds like aggressive passive aggressiveness well, yeah yeah well it's the new niggas call it's it's generation sassy and the sassy aggressiveness meaning that a sassy nigga will body you hmm. a nigga with nail paint will body you he, he will give you with a headshot like a vibe cartel in them they was wearing fingernail paint and they have tattoos and everything and they body and shit. remember uh tropicana remember belly remember that nigga who looked ambiguous yeah he was sassy aggressive he had peacock feathers and he was uh remember beg for a dollar beg for a dollar yeah sassy aggressive he body niggas. <laughs> remember omar from the wire sassy aggressiveness remember aubrey graham drake yeah he's sassy aggressive you remember saucy santana nigga? yeah they're sassy aggressive so they sassy but they aggressive too so that's what we live in right now we live in a world of the sassy aggressive niggas and this movement that drake represents it's almost like it's like a ukraine versus russia type thing russia is like you know testicular fortitude niggas that still you know what i mean don't shave their legs and whatnot wrestle bears and whatnot and yeah, they, they, type and drake is like ukraine it's a different it's like, locker room it's a wrestlemania shit it's some WrestleMania Maybe. shit, you know what I mean? Some WrestleMania shit. It's, 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 what's the nigga that ravishing Rick Rubin, right? 
They grew up on oh, everything that Vince McMahon up. fed them. Look at what mixed men look. Look at what what Vin, look. They come to find they out everything rotten right at. Hold on. Everything at the core of WWF is rotten. Everything mm. at the core of Nickelodeon is rotten. Mm. Everything at the core of Disney is rotten. Woo. Anything at the core of Bad Boys, uh, Columbia, Universal is rotten. It's not about the lawsuits. It's what's at the core. What is being revealed? What 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 are you being shown? Okay, everybody's caught up on a oh the 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 Drake, um the Nickelodeon the Drake thing and and he was into people's feet. No, fam, it, it goes a little bit deeper than that. The whole shit is rotten. So if the generation of children grew up watching this and this is their this was what the, this was their religion this was what would raven do what would drake degrassi do what would this little nigga orlando brown do y'all was living vicariously through um homie and them um, that was doing the, the fucking milkshake and and, and keenan and all of these weird uh 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 tevin campbell like niggas you understand these these racially and these very gender fluid type dudes. Y'all was B2K cosplaying. Shout out to you. Shout out, shout out to them. But they had a whole generation mimicking them. Okay. And it, and once you start mimicking somebody and living vicariously mm -hmm. through them, there is no stopping that. There's a downward spiral from that point forward. So once they start, once Chris Strokes, Chris Stokes, right Stokes. into the core, right? Come to find out the whole time. All of the boy bands was rotten to the core. Come to find out the whole time Britney Spears was rotten to the core. Come to find out all of that shit that they were selling our people. So remember, if you eat a hamburger and it got worms somewhere underneath it, does it do you still get the worms, yay or nay? Yeah. So the entertainment that they've been feeding us for damn near 30 years, all of it not only was gmo but it had rotten worms at the core of it is that an effect on the people in any way whatsoever what what my thing is what 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 brunt do you bear as the as the consumer because you niggas was right. consuming this shit. you understand and the ev the evidence of that would be the the body of hip-hop at the age of 50 is sick and is dying survey says if you look at some of these artists very recently right they belong to the body politic of hip-hop they're dying because the bodies are sick right based on overexposure to things in the culture that was just outright toxic and yeah, then they became, it, though, for, sir. they became folk right. for it they became you know emblems and symbols for it and they're they're paying the pie the the, the look it's like an oil spill rich it's gonna be 10 to there's gonna be five to ten years of a shadow cast of people with lawsuits people exposing things this is like an oil slick it's going to cast a shadow for five to ten years i'm not gonna sit around and be like fake surprise like oh no i'm surprised that y'all out there be surprised every other day there's nothing taking place in the realms of entertainment that professor grip didn't set this bitch up to talk about that red and blue didn't set this bitch up to talk about that they phil valentine when he was pulling up that aa didn't pull up when kt was giving you the breakdowns back in the days all of these right. things were literally laid out verbatim bobby phil delbert hakeem c freeman i could go on for days so you know it, it, it's doing what it has to do we need a reset everything is resetting yeah yeah man yeah big time People who Every used time. to be good it's, friends it's, they not even rocking no more you got relationships on the fucking ropes you 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 got people they just not into what they used to be into so everything is resetting and rightfully so no facts let me get let me get some questions for uh red and blue before we get out of here I want to take some questions. We're going to probably be on here for about 20 more minutes, uh, 20, 30 more minutes. Give me some questions. Let's get to some questions for Red and Blue. It's happening tomorrow, family, April 20th, starting down. at 4.20 p.m. to 8 p.m., hosted by Brother Rich. I'm going to be hosting Mr. 363, 
Black That's Magic right. 363. We're going to be That's at right. 400 Loyola Drive in Atlanta, Georgia. For tickets, uh, it says link in bio. Well, the link is not in the bio. Um, I mean, I, truth be told, y'all could pull up. Like it's a, it's right. a free thing. It's a free affair. So right, don't right. feel okay. fresh. Oh, yeah. You do what y'all be mm -hmm. doing. Put the address in your Google. That's all you got to do. That's all, that's right. your only obligation. Do what I do. When I hear address, I just put it in my little thing and see how far it is from me. That's your okay. only obligation. But your obligation is to be there on time because you got to be up out of there by 8 o'clock. Yeah. Bro Brother Rich will not be smoking tomorrow, by the way. I can't. I, I, I can't. Um, I'm not no a smoker, y'all. I'm, 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 not, I'm not a smoker, y'all. I will not be. We'll leave that the red, blue, the professionals. But I might, I might, I think I might bring me some red wine, though. I might bring me some red wine. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no wrong with a little some, sipping tin. Bring me a little red wine or something like that. Shout out to um, shout out to everybody who's been on um, sending the super super chat. Shout out to Kimberly with the uh, super chat. Shout uh, out to Tyree, uh, my son, goddess. Um, yeah, I heard about that. My son, Kai said, and, I said black right. Americans have no. Coach, right now, now that's the weirdest shit in the world. Well, uh, a person who's not Black American to be involved in Black American culture and to insult it, and well, not only be involved in it, but become a millionaire. A millionaire. A millionaire. What? Ty Ty Tyreek now she said he's cosplaying an American nigga, right? And to insult Black Americans on top of that, that's pretty ballsy. That's pretty right. ballsy. So I don't know and the context. Right. I just hear people him, keep saying it. So right. Yeah. I didn't see the clip. You know, I didn't see the clip. However, it, it I have to point out that academics is Jamaican. These are first generation, y'all. Yeah. And Cosinet is Trini, I believe. If he's not Trini, he might be Haitian. I I, I mean, let me yeah. know. But these are these are these these both of these brothers are first generational, they are not tethered to the yeah. land like that. There's a, um, un, you know, there, it's just a conversation that is going to uh, eventually um, have to be had on a more global stage. Eventually. Yeah. 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 Somebody said non FBAs. Yeah. Imagine, imagine I moved to Jamaica and then by the time the Sirius, project. then by the time Sirius get older. He say, well, you know, Jamaicans ain't got no culture. And this nigga making millions of dollars in Jamaica. Like, like the audacity. The, the audacity of these motherfuckers, man. Yeah, Don't have me get on my uh, black American shit, y'all. Don't have me do that. Let's get to another question. Let's get to another question. Uh, let's see uh, what we talking about in the chat. Somebody said, give an edible to Brother Rich. Nah, nah, Brother Rich will not be eating it. Nah. Nah, I will not be doing that. Shout out to the Senate Infinite Goddess, but I will not be doing I, I don't think I'm ever going to eat an edible the rest of my life, y'all. I ain't doing that the rest of my life. Yeah. Um, Look. We already talked about the dude who set himself on fire before uh, Red got here. Yeah. We touched on yep. that. Yeah, we touched on that. Yeah. Uh, uh, going down. Blue Pill said it's going to be a shit show. In New York City with Trump being there. He said that like two or three days ago. And lo and behold, they didn't waste no time. Bar Heavy J said, what would the ideal situation for this content look like in y'all opinion? For this continent? No, content. Oh, for this continent. Okay. What would the ideal situation for this continent look like in y'all opinion? One, give us the land back, right? Because there are some migrants on this land. In a, in a perfect situation, those <clears throat> migrants not only would leave the land, but those migrants would take everything that they brought with them back to wherever they came from. And mm. a lot of things that are hidden in this land, like those hidden cities and things of that nature, and those mountains of gold that Noble Drew Ali spoke on, those would mm. make them, uh, they would make themselves uh, very much aware. I would want, in the ideal situation, the artifacts be returned and revealed. Mm the uh the colonizers of the land removed from the land and return the land so you know certain type of wildlife could flourish mm -hmm. and also the resources that have been pillaged and been taken from the land i would want that to cease immediately to me 
that will be um and, and and for things for the land to replenish itself i want to i want to see what the land looked like prior to the alien invasion mm. Mm. shout out to the brother salam supernova salam yeah shout out yeah. supernova salam yeah. yo do we drop that link for the uh for the album and the thing somebody was mm-hmm. asking about that album mm-hmm. the the, the link no i didn't i didn't i didn't get the link for that yeah there's oh no, the, the one you sent right me, now. the one you sent me, right, right? Yeah, yeah, the one I sent you. Yeah, I, I, want them out. I want them to jam out to that music because tonight is significant. I want them to be able to come through tomorrow and know some music. Let me uh, get to another question and I'll work on this, uh, putting this link up. Right. Um, they want to know, uh, what are your thoughts on the earthquakes? Man. This 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 theme of the subterranean world waking up. This theme of something waking up underneath our feet. This theme of the quote unquote dry bones, right? Waking up. This rumbling from below us, right? This has been taking place and this has been a dominating theme for a very very long time. Spirit tells me that there is a big one on the way. Spirit tells me that there is a big one on the way. However, I cannot pinpoint where this big one is going to take place or be. However, there is a big one on the way. A lot of work with the subterranean oh. world. Huh? A lot oh. of revelations is going. <laughs> what did I say? Pausey. <laughs> what happened, Blue? <laughs> Blue, you've been super quiet today. You all right, Blue? You've been super quiet. Wait, Blue had a whole 30 minutes. He was cooking. <laughs> blue, 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 been super late. Blue, I think Blue ate some of that pizza. That's what it is. Blue, Yo, on you gonna have that blue, pizza tomorrow? I think Blue on it, goddamn. Yeah, uh, blue, oh, man. man. You took an Tell edible, me. bro. Let you want incredible edibles? Let, let, let me say this. Let me say this real quick. Let me say this real quick. I know some, yo, the people I know be having some amazing products and services yeah so blue pill now he got y'all know blue pill got one of the best sea moss in the world is um his smoothie shake now blue pill got one of the best pizzas in the world what's up with this dude man be in his bag be, this nigga be having products man i think it's that all white if you um good, if, right? no the pizza's good good i ain't even gonna lie pizza's good no, good Family, if you're in Atlanta tomorrow, come out just for the pizza. Come out tomorrow. It's like cocoa patty and pizza together. Just, just to try the pizza. Man. Yeah. Pizza Man, this pizza is good. Yeah. yeah, even King Simon said he can't take edibles no more. Yeah, I'm, there should be a ban on edibles. Yeah. There should be a ban, a permanent yeah, I, ban I, I don't, on edibles. I don't eat edibles. I don't. I ain't yeah, I don't, that. That, that. That should not be legal. Edibles should not be legal. Because yeah. the yeah. ships will hit you like three hours later, bro. You think right. you could, sneak up on you. then it just sneak yeah, up on you. <laughs> Shit, right. That's like a nah, that's like a it's... sneak a sneak up knockout. You know what I mean? You don't respect that. So you don't think you high, right? You just keep eating it. The next thing you know, it's over. You on not the floor. right, man. It's not right. It's not right. It's not right. All right. Um, do you all feel we are indigenous to just the Americas or all? lands they told me that they went all the way around the world and saw me in blue pill we everywhere man god damn it let's stop that shit you got to travel to see that we're everywhere real talk they really lied to us making us think that we we low-key uh segmented it no nigga literally everywhere that you go you're gonna see us uh uh-huh. indeed 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 any thoughts on that blue or are you just chilling? All right, blue's eating right now. Let blue let, 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 let blue eat. All right. Um, let's see what else is uh in the question. A lot of comments in here. Once again, shout out to King Simon. Uh shout out to you. King Simon had a fire event in New York. He killing shit, man. Okay, somebody said blue. Why is nobody talking about using indium? Is it are they talking about iridium? What what Cody, are you trying uh, to say iridium, or am I mistaken? Yeah, because I mean, there's there's two. There's indium and there's iridium. Okay, I, I didn't know there was. I didn't. I don't know what indian is. Okay, maybe he's not. Okay, okay. They're not, they're not talking about either one of them. Um, 
Iridium in its natural state is a very toxic element or metal. So little to know, you know, not too many people know how to um, convert it into a, a metal that's digestible. I had it accessible as a trace mineral. I used to put it in soul gold water when I used to bottle my alkaline water. That was one of my cheat codes. So people mm -hmm. don't talk about it because they don't know how to use it. They don't have access to it. You know what I'm saying? I, mm. I would I would guess we say that it's an extraterrestrial rock and it does this and that. All right, why are we not using it? What can we use it for? How can it give us an advantage? You know what I'm saying? We 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 would want to know these things. Ask Chat GPT. You know what I'm saying? Like what, what's the use of knowing that we have all of these amazing things in our existence and we have no idea how to use them? Yes. No, indeed, indeed, indeed. Yes, right, let's Georgia get... has gold. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, Georgia somebody has... said, "Does it matter where I get my herb from for for tomorrow?" As long as it ain't that 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 lot. <laughs> as long as it's that czar. That gas station shit is a no no. All right. Uh, are our people truly ready for life without this system, though? Um, when you say the system, you mean under the auspices of the government, per se? Right. Uh, there, there's no way to find out. You know, the, the logical question, would, I mean, the logical answer would be no, because people have not done the necessary work to prepare themselves to, to live independent of the system and off grid. And it entails a lot. And it entails a lot of endurance. It entails a lot of operation more than anything. Right. And that's where been very elusive of us as the people is our ability to work together cohesively in unity for for a project share with one another be resourceful for one another check on one another you know what i'm saying make it be more about the group than the individual but people is like you know i got these babies to watch after my nigga like i got to got to get it how i live so there's so many things that um you know, push us away from the center. All right, next question. Would y'all get an AI robot when they come out, come out or not? Me personally, <clears throat> maybe, yeah. I got the little mop, my, uh, the joint, you, you know, the little, joint, the, little, the little mop, the joint, mop, <laughs> mop your whole floor, you know? <laughs> yeah, I, I, went to, uh, I went to a meeting the other day at a ghost kitchen to get a, to get a spot yeah. up in there. Yeah. And they have AI assistants. They got the robots to come and they get your order when you mm -hmm. finish with it and they bring it to the front so the drivers could come and pick it up from the locker so you don't have to stop doing what you're doing. So, yes, in every way imaginable, I am going to be participating with finding out how I can co-pilot with AI to become the team of the tangent of the future because the job of the future is going to be have you mastered and figured out how to properly assist AI and helping AI assist you. Right. So why not get started now? I need to know everything about this robot that is, is necessary for me need to, to, to know. So yes, I'll be getting one. Right. Let me ask you, this, let course, me ask you a question real, real quick, Brad. let me yeah. ask Blue this question because Blue Pill is the, is the chef. He is, he's becoming, one of the, the 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 chefs of all chefs and our not only in our community but I mean the brother the brother could throw down. Yeah. Um all right blue let me give you a scenario brother. You're not mm -hmm. only a chef, you're not only a metaf metaphysician, but you're also a businessman. Yes. Say you have a crew of four people in the kitchen, y'all put the meal together and y'all serve the people the food. Four, four, a group of four, y'all. You, you know, everybody does something in the kitchen. You got, it's you, you got your sous chefs, and, you know, y'all all work together and do what y'all do. They say love is the secret ingredient in food that we taste, that we feel, that we're not aware of, but it's there. And when we get it from a certain person, you could, you could, you could feel it within the food. Um, you start to expand your operations, Blue. And you start to cut back on expenses because you buy organic food and it's extremely ex expensive. So you get rid of two of the people. So now it's only two of y'all 
and you have two AI robots now. So you have two humans and two AI robots, but they help you a lot in the kitchen. It's just as good as having two humans in there. Blue, because you don't have that human aura there, will the food have the same amount of love when you serve it to the people now that there are only two workers and two robots there? Does AI also eliminate that secret love ingredient that we get from food when there's actual real workers back there in the kitchen, Blue Pill? You may push out more food. What'd you say, Blue? Oh, there's, there's only one way to find it. Right. Um, because again, that's an amazing question with amazing scenario, and it makes us what well, recalibrate the things that we have taken for advantage. Because we wasn't being concerned about the morphogenetic auric field in the kitchen, and that what 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 vibration did it recalibrate in the spectrum of rainbow when you was making rainbow kale, or you know. Did the shit start going bad the minute that you walked out of the restaurant because somebody had some real bad energy that was prepping right. your food? These are very tangible conversations to speak about when it comes to the alchemy of food. You feel me? The alchemy of food. And yes, there is a very integral part <clears throat> that the chef plays with putting their, their hands on the food, touching the food, because the food activates enzymes inside of your body just in case you wanted to eat the food, the body would know how to break it down and digest it. So while you're operating with the food, your body almost like symbiosis. Think about Avatar when she grabbed a horse and her body went yeah. and got the file of what it means to interface with a horse. And she became ambient enough to experience that, that interface. It's the same thing with food. You mm. know what I'm saying? When, when 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 you are in that's why you get to dancing and you like yeah my cells remember you know this is the this is this is the integral part of the food you know what i'm saying we bringing it back to basics right. you know this is how i remember it you know what i mean that thing it, it give you a whole different rhythmic vibration mm -hmm. so yeah, I, I think that something may be lost um, from taking out the, <clears throat> the Midas touch human component, you know, this this aspect of sentience, but it's really going to make us appreciate it more once it's gone. It has to leave for us really to get so, into that yeah. part of appreciating right. it because all of the evidence is around us about subtle energy, and yet we still have not had these conversations about how we deal with one another, hurt one another, and, and, and you know what I'm saying? The power that comes with the touch, the power that comes with, you know, um, um, being compassionate for a person, you know, all of this stuff, the, the power that comes with the abuse of touch, the responsibility that comes with touch that has turned into abuse in the community over and over and over again. Because <clears throat> we want to talk about Eastern philosophies through Western ideologies, you know, what does that mean that we want to work in the space of Eastern philosophy, spiritualities and science, but operate under a Western mind under like the auspices of religion, how we approach sexuality, how we approach, you know, what I'm saying um, making a connection with a person to establish what are these safe spaces, because one can't take anything for granted because you don't know what version of this melanated person you're dealing with in this society. Mm -hmm. definitely definitely you know I'm, I'm when you when you talk about touch and you know we often talk about how things change with these um you know depending on the energies that's in the ethers and um the conversation changes i wonder in terms of um you know love making does it get more intense depending on you know whether we're in the age of aquarius the age of pisces whether, um, you know, post-eclipse, pre-eclipse. I wonder in terms of lovemaking, like, you know, uh, what would that mean? What would happen now post this eclipse? Any thoughts on, on, on that? Again, you know, because we are in the season of spring and I tie everything to its astro astrological bearings, this is the time of procreation. This is the time of a lot of aggressive energy, which translates into you know, sexual um, tension. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If you notice, they've been speaking about 
male sexuality in the news since November of last year, since Scorpio, every single day, nonstop. And mm. as Dr. Francis Press Wilson explained to us, <clears throat> when you see um, people in position of power making flexes about missiles, right? They're really, it's really like, is phallus uh, measuring they're, they're doing the pissing wow. contest on a global level right now wow. so everything is being pushed by the aggression of sexual energy sexual energy is ex introducing the martian months of aries which deals with the what the the unbridled male sexual energy of the ox which is aggression if you've seen a fatty and you responded your wood was like whoop and then you get into game mode that's taurus right you focalize that energy as the bull in the china um store that's the cow he -he she represents abundance you know what i'm saying you doing whatever you got to do saying what you got to say to get on her backside do what you got to do you split it in half we get into gemini she fuck around and have twins because you was about that business and now the rest of the whole cycle is about the journey of the twins or going from the fool to the wise man. Mm. That's the whole shit. You feel me? And yeah. the, the cosmos and the wheels tells the story. So yes, um, Aries, like I said, is Martian energy. Then you get into Taurus, the opposite of Taurus is Scorpio. So, you know, this is when this this is when the, the the insects is doing it this is when pollen is doing it this is when nature's doing it this is when the doing gets done in order for the rebirth to, to to take place that's what i seen in that eclipse you know what i'm saying when that weather change and them and, 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 and things change up the insects change them animals change you know their animal instincts their instinctual nature they're programmed to do this stuff this is right. what nature is the beautiful marriage between masculine and feminine, the union that shall not be interrupted by no weird shit. But we're in the age of Aquarius, so it ain't gonna be nothing but weird shit. Right, right. Let's get to uh we're gonna do about three more questions before we get out of here. Um, do you think J. Cole manifested his outcome by naming him naming his album Might Delete Later? Power in the tongue. <laughs> I think I think it might apologize first. later. <laughs> and then his next album, they said it's called the fall off, right? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> they write his whole script right now. You know, I mean his whole script. The power's in the pen. That's undeniable. Yeah. You you self-fulfilling prophecies. Self-fulfilling prophecies. And being in the fact that we live in this quickening, this quantum quickening, these self-fulfilling prophecies are ever more self-fulfilling you know they're happening at a quicker pace so literally he dropped that album and that shit and and, and and like a few days later he was up there you know apologizing and he and i never seen somebody delete something off of a streaming service before so to me that was the first i was like he pulled the joint down off the streaming service so what is that even these are unprecedented times sure like mm. what what the fuck you you yeah. you, you know what i mean like you... but i mean that showed you the strength of conviction because he really has to be standing on internal business <clears throat> and that much i gotta respect because we should all want to be that strong when it comes to self that you are willing to make the he self-sacrificed like i said he pinned himself to the cross in public and said i could sacrifice my career i could sacrifice my cool points right right but what you won't do is control the noise in my head i have to answer to me so what you is playing me long game. Comfortable, uh with living in my body look like it looks like me falling on the sword in public and sacrificing my cool in order for me you know what i'm saying to stay sane and we we would all want to get there because Everything else that we've been shown in hip hop leading up to this has been about denial of accountability. Our inability to take accountability has led to the, all of the sloppiness. So we had to see a counterbalance and it had to go and hit his love eclipse the war energy or the fear energy going into the eclipse. 
Mm -hmm. I'll repeat his sacrificial right attempt to show you what love looks like in terms of the crystals getting on the cross on some sacrifice shit. His initials are JC. He did it on Sunday mm. night, right? Mm. His sacrificial ability to show you with self embalmment, burning oneself, lighting oneself on fire to become a phoenix. I'm going to do it in public, right? To free myself of your judgment, your expectations, and the willingness that you want to see me go into a war hawk, into a, a, a hawk, a Scorpio. This is a war hawk, not the phoenix Scorpio. And all of this is starting by a Scorpio about a Scorpio. Like I said, I wrote the Black Christos Mythos while all of this was taking place. And I was like, watch this book write itself. Did I not say that right? Mm. So what we're saying uh, is, uh. is a beautiful thing because it's us turned inside out as a people. Nothing that you're bearing witness to is going to distract you or pull you away from yourself. Every single thing that you're seeing right now is reminding you about conversations you either had with yourself or that you've been skipping out. You feel me? Or that you might need to be equipped to have with someone else when they come to you and be like, daddy, mommy, I want to be in the entertainment business. You can't pour cold water on their heads, but how are you not going to program your children for aspirational goals and, and, and acquisitions of their dreams? They got a dream in a whole different colors now. Because the, the, the rainbow spectrum that they was dreaming in before is, is some shady shit going on, y'all. Mm. Yeah, yeah, man. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's get to, uh, before we get to another question, Um, once again, family, it's going down. We wind it down tonight. I'm going to do one more question, but it's going down tomorrow. Somebody give me the address again. Where's King Simon when I need him? My brother King Simon. 400 Loyola Drive. 400 and Loyola Drive yeah. at 420 p.m. is going down. Okay, here we go. 420 to 8 p.m., y'all. Yeah, we've been promising a lot of literary releases, but this is actually a book that is finished, finalized, and ready to go. There's a lot of game in it. It's a hip-hop handbook. It is 48 Laws of Power hip hop version from a melanated perspective, <clears throat> from the perspective of a, a Carthaginian in, in, in Rome, you know, Hannibal in Rome, not a goddamn Roman. So yeah. this book is is it's a lot of game in it. It is it, it's it's an amazing perspective. And I found when attempting to tell the story of power players in hip hop, I was unable to tell it without the two Sean's. So we, we point fingers and some people throw rocks and they have a lot of opinions, but these individuals were so pivotal that there's very few other people that we can utilize, for example, when we're speaking about the dynamic power plays that took place in the last 20 or 30 years in hip hop. They brought it from, you know, the underground to the mainstream, you know, to, to, to corporate, to global fanfare. You know what I'm saying? These individuals still built these worlds. And it's very unfortunate to see what we're seeing at this time. But it's life, you know, and it's life playing out. And we are so blessed to, you know, be able to bear witness to do the knowledge. Because because life is life and it's teaching a lesson. You know what okay. I'm saying? Yeah. Blue, they want to know, is the pizza gluten-free? Yes. All right, all right. Is that spell crust or or not? Yes. Dope, dope, dope. All right, let's do uh, one question, then we're gonna get out of here because we are uh, we gonna we we gonna we gonna see some a lot of y'all tomorrow at uh 400 Loyola Drive in Atlanta, Georgia. This is a free event, by the way, family. So if you're in you know. Georgia, just keep in mind this is a free event. Um, you know, we're just gonna be vibing there. A couple of hours, but it starts at 420. The address is 400 Loyola Drive. All right. Let's um they 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 talking what the vegan cheese. They're asking all types of questions about the pizza now. Blue the, he talked about this on the other live. What, vegan, what's the cheese yes. you use? Yes, yeah. diet cheese. The vegan is the okay. cheese is vegan. It's all vegan ingredients, family. Um, we're not incorporating any dairy into it. Mm -mm. 
damn this some somebody said is it okay to meditate now after the eclipse i was told it wasn't good to meditate during meditate during and an a few days after the eclipse damn they be saying all types of shit man jesus christ man wow um, yeah like you know and and, and it's, it's interesting you know? yes yeah, like you really have to prioritize and they ask for our opinion but if you tell them like be careful with how you come into consciousness, evaluate where you're at in your consciousness. You really got to get to a place where you can answer some of these questions for yourself. And um, I, I was I meditated before the eclipse, during it, and afterwards. And, um, you know, it's like Lotto. You got to be in it to win it. You know what I'm saying? This is an active participation type of situation. And nobody's from a distance pointing the direction and you go into it you know this has to be part of your life your everyday thing that you do you know what i mean you gotta yeah find you a way of confirmation whether it be pendulums whether it be um pulling cards tarot cards whether it be using uno cards god damn it pennies whatever you have to ask questions of yourself so you can learn what your language is so you can confirm for you what your answers are Stop putting your power in other people's hands and then wondering why people are out here abusing people who put power in their hands. You know what I'm saying? Without all of the, the proper safeguards put in place to make sure that your peace is protected. Indeed. Yeah, family, just uh, be careful out there. You know, there's um, endless amounts of information on, on the internet, family. Just be careful what you're listening to and use your intuition and your discretion. Uh, before we closing out blue red uh let them know your contact info anything you want them to be aware of anything coming up so yes. get out of here and prepare for tomorrow 4 20. yeah again family yes tomorrow 4 20 at 4 20 location is 400 loyola drive that is in atlanta georgia we will be having a free event free 99 it's going to be celebrating the release of our mixtape <clears throat> book, both named 48 Pillars of Power, <clears throat> as well as a strain that me and Red will be pulling it out uh, called Alpha 88. And this is a THCA strain. We also will be giving you a very quick brief breakdown and synopsis about what's called the legal gas game. Um, you can get involved with a, a legal gas at least into the month of September. We're going to be laying out all of this information for you in real time. All right. So please make sure that you check out the sampler. You can check out a sampler of the album before it's released tomorrow at 420 over at blackcloudent.banzoogle.com. Can you spell that, Fred? B A N D B A N D z o o g l e zoogle like google ban zoogle like google and that's black cloud e n t cloud spell k l o w d king simon is putting a link in the chat y'all can see it go ahead and check out that album all 12 tracks yeah you can hear check the album out you standing can on the business dope. very yeah, proud of the, uh, this project thank you brother red once again, you know, for showing up, um, doing your, your your best ghost face rendition, you know, yeah, yeah, know, bro, got sixty four bars on everything. So salute to him. Thank you, know you God. It, his determination to be heard. Bar Thank done. you, Bobby Digital. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby Digital. <laughs> Thank you, Jizzle. I ain't master <laughs> killer. Yeah. Thank you, Inspector <laughs> Jack. I appreciate you, King. <laughs> Is uh Bobby Digital. Thank you, Master Killer. <laughs> oh man, man, oh man. Mm -mm -mm. Hey man, hey. listen. I uh, want to thank everybody for tuning hey, in. Shout man. out to the real man. I see KT got a hundred K followers. I'm like, I watched this to young man, man, his consistent campaign. I when I open my IG up, his podcast be at the top of the page. And he always looks as if he's I'm gonna be working for KT one day. 
interesting conversations, some high level ones. Yeah. So shout Indeed. out to Kate and his whole team. All right, all right. All right, fam, we get out of here. Hopefully, I see a lot of y'all tomorrow in Atlanta in the ATL 420. At yeah, man, salmon burgers, brother Rich, too. You ain't oh, talking man. about salmon burgers. Yeah. Oh, man. It's so... <laughs> Damn it, man. Damn it, man. He's going to have salmon burgers pizza. Come on. I can't be eating all that shit, man. Come on, man. Oh, hey, man. man. I'm, I'm trying to be on my fruits and veggies, man. Damn it, man. <laughs> Yo, salmon burgers. Have. Salmon burgers is incredible. Yeah. Sound with your family. I, I, I know y'all, y'all, y'all probably think I'll be making this shit up. I'm, I'm serious though, y'all. If y'all come tomorrow and y'all try the salmon burgers and the pizza, and if he, you 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 had to see most too. I'm working on it. <laughs> if he got all of that tomorrow, it's a wrap. It's a wrap. It was. A, it's a wrap. Listen, I want to thank everybody for. Uh, being on live tonight, I pre- really appreciate y'all. I'll be back. I- I'll go live for a couple of minutes tomorrow. I'll bring my phone and I'll go live for a couple of minutes and vibe with y'all for a couple of minutes until I uh, have to start um, hosting or whatever. But um, yeah, man, I appreciate the live tonight. Real chill, good vibes. Yeah, yeah, this brother yeah. said this bill, he said this bill was 2020 vibes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Throwback, <laughs> throwback vibes. This was throwback vibes tonight. You know what I'm right. saying? But um, we enjoying ourselves doing what we got to do. But you um, before we leave, you ain't tell yeah. us, you ain't share with us, bro. Out of the big mm-hmm. three and your observation, you know, especially coming from mm-hmm. you and your generation, these more so like your titans. So, you know what I mean? Um, I, I wanted to hear your perspective before we left on that note, real quick, please. I personally thought, and I had to talk with KT. I personally thought because of the run J Cole was on. I don't think anybody can fuck with J. Cole. I think J. Cole has run the last two years. His his feature, the um features he's been on has been incredible. Mm-hmm. He's been really killing it. So I was like, right now, nobody should mess with Cole right now. So that's why I was extra. I'm like, oh man, you know, I'm not mad that he apologized, but I think it was the if he really wanted to go in his bag, he could have really yeah, went in his bag. But, but you can't go in your bag if your heart's not into it. So I, I feel him. You can't go in your bag if I can't go into my my bag if my heart's not into the conversation. So this is why I talk about topics that I enjoy, y'all. Then I could come up with the questions I could come up with because I genuinely enjoy these conversations. So I feel it. But that that was my opinion. I thought that um, Cole, nobody was going to be able to touch Cole because of what he was going on. How it turned out, I do think um, Kendrick got the best verse. I think Ke- um, Drake's joint was cool, but I already heard Drake on tracks like Back to Back. And that was a monster. Like, I'm talking about when Drake released Back to Back, it was a monster. Nobody seen that coming, especially against Meek Mill. Everybody was like, oh, Drake against me. So I think it's hard to put out a diss track like Back to Back and then, year, like, 10 years later, come out with um whatever this one. I forget the name of the push-ups. This is called push-ups. So yeah. I think, you know, it's not whack, but um, I think it could have been much better. Um. Ross's joint was was cool too. There, there was nothing that really like like so far. Uh, Kendrick's joint hit when you heard Kendrick's yeah, yeah, first yeah, yeah. On, on on that album. Yeah, Kendrick's joint hit. Play value. Yeah, nothing else hit like Kendrick's verse. But I really wanted Kendrick to to what they call it the nail in the coffin. I want him to if he just came out with and, and he could have dropped anything and 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 it, it would have been a wrap because uh, he had the momentum. I feel, but he didn't. He chose not to. So. It was just real messy. This was a real messy battle. How it was released, the people who they released it to, academics and um, Drake um, changing verses and all. It, it was a yeah. real messy battle to me. I think, um, yeah, they have to be aggressive. Yeah, sassy. They they're so sassy mm-hmm. and they don't have a grip on what what hip hop needs and what they need to sustain themselves. I think they're gonna get edged by AI. This is gonna be the at the battle where we go mm. to the AI wow. joints. We like AI is more interesting than the real people. Why we need the real people again? I think that they're gonna slip up with this one and their inability to operate with the capacity of a robot. Cause Raw showed you on some robot robotic shit. I can answer you in two hours. Mm. Right? The robots answers and they is it was more interesting it had more of a bop and a snap to it so don't act like the robots can't get a bop or a snap 
we done heard some music read it tell you did try to tell you I, I i've been hearing those songs in my head ever since i've heard them rather than any human songs that i've heard for the last two or three weeks outside of kendrick and some of future joints so mm. that the the, yeah. the music revolution is coming um oh, yeah. via ai and may the best man or machine win because at mm. the end of the day if it slaps it slaps and that's going to be it's going to come down to the final test People be like, nah, I like this music. Just like they got whole Tupac albums right now that people are playing this AI. And they're mm -hmm. like, yo, I love this shit. This is the mm -hmm. best Tupac yet. Mm -hmm. Interesting times, family. Very interesting times. Once again, thank everybody for tuning in. Thank you, Red and Blue Pill. And we'll see you tomorrow, right, family? See you tomorrow, 420. Like I said, I go live for a little while before I do my hosting thing. So come back on the channel around 4, 24 o'clock. I'll go live for a little bit. But I see everybody tomorrow. Blue, man, please bring the Seamoss. Could you bring the Seamoss? I need Seamoss. I need, I need salmon burgers. And I need some pizza, brother. I'm That's requesting true. all of that. I need all of that, brother, man. I need all of that. <laughs> but uh, I, I, appreciate, I appreciate it, Blue. Right. Where, where Red at? Red, uh, Red, you there? Yes, I'm here. I'm in the building. All Shout right, out to all of the family. Shout out to the Black Magic 363 family. Look forward to seeing y'all, meeting new people tomorrow, be in the building 420 to 8 p.m. 400 Loyola Drive, Love and Light. Make sure y'all go enjoy that album tonight, man. Vibe out. Let us know. I need some first reaction videos. I need some first reaction videos and some TikTok dances. We are rewarding all of y'all. So hit us up. We got some merch for y'all. Tap in. We want first reaction videos and TikTok dances. Peace. Peace, family.